Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Levi Ware. He's the president, founder, and CEO of the Melodic Caring Project. Levi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think what you guys are doing is actually really innovative and cool and, and giving back to people that, that really need it. But maybe before we kind of get into exactly what you're doing, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Sure. Yeah, I grew up. Um, I was actually born in Southern California. I was born in Redlands, but oh, nice. uh, but my family moved north uh, okay. very early on in my life. I think I was two years old when we moved to uh, Washington State, and gotcha. they moved us to uh, Whidbey Island, where I grew up for till I was about eight, and then uh, after that, they moved to the mainland and uh, grew up in Marysville, Washington, for uh, you know till I was about seventeen, eighteen. Very cool. So you you were you were homeschooled, correct? I was. So how how was that? Like I I know some people that have done that, and I you know like I, I'm always kind of curious to know people's thoughts on on that, and if they enjoyed that or 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 what. Yeah, you know I think it's funny because that's it's one of those things. I think at the time I felt like I was missing out on something. Okay. Um, you know, socially and that sort of thing, I was removed from any kind of a, a larger social group. You know, it was just me and my two brothers and my parents. Um, but in retrospect, I look back and I think I, I really gained so much more experience than most have the opportunity for. You know, where my my parents were very, uh, very kind of open with our experience and wanted us to get more than just kind of a standard school experience. So they put us in business situations and uh, and we traveled a lot. You know, rather than just kind of sitting down and learning history from a book, they would throw us in a camper and we'd drive out to, you know, all the sites where American history unfolded. And uh, so it was incredible. I got a lot of very cool opportunities that I think most kids don't get. No, I 100% agree with you. And I, I love the idea of being able to do that, right? When you're talking about a specific thing, you're like, well, there it is, kids. It's right in front right. of you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Read about That's it great. or you look at it and see where it where it unfolded. And in that, in that way, it was much more real life, you know? Sure. No, that that's great, man. So, you had a little bit of a uh, kind of stint in college. Can you kind of talk about what you what you took there and kind of walk me through kind of your kind of university college education? Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, you know, I mean, my, my high school uh, career ended early because it, it just I, I really feel like we we. Uh, we underappreciate the intelligence of kids, you know, and Agreed. we put them for hours in to school situations which really don't demand much of them and they're capable of so much more you know i mean uh, i think kids can be done with all their work by noon you know and should be able to actually apply what they've learned rather than sitting for hours you know almost just to learn how to sit that's how it feels anyway and so sure. um for me, uh, at 15, I had my high school equivalency and thought, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with wasting time um, sitting around you know, in books. And so I took my GED at 15, graduated from high school, and started going to Everett Community College and you know, just taking entry-level college classes. Wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with myself. And um, after, uh, after a quarter, I, I just kind of thought, it's it's not inspiring me. It's not uh, you know it, it wasn't giving me any kind of excitement or direction to move forward. And so I I quit going to college and just started working. And so I've uh, I've been working since I was fifteen doing uh, doing a lot of, of varied things. I actually owned a pawn shop when I was seventeen that my dad really? got to. Yeah, and interesting. So, managed and ran the pawn shop and found out that that was a terrible business with a lot of people that were you know. <laughs> I went into it thinking, um, I guess operating like my family business, you know, trusting people. And I, I soon learned that it doesn't, doesn't pay to trust people in the pawn industry, unfortunately. And I got, I just got had many times, you know, Sure. but, but it was a great, I mean, it was, it was such a good learning experience, you know? Um, and, uh, 
and and my family has also been in construction so i've uh, i've been in construction all my life uh, okay. and and have done a lot of varied jobs doing general construction so did that uh, and was doing construction up until the time that we launched the Melodic Caring Project and was actually balancing both for quite a while, doing construction all over Washington State, doing work for veterans, uh, handicap okay. access stuff and that sort of thing, and uh, trying to balance Melodic Caring Project at the same time. And my wife and I realized, my wife Stephanie Ware is the co-founder of Melodic Caring Project and a huge, huge force behind the project, and uh, realized there was just no way that we could balance both, you know, uh, being gone four or five days a week doing construction and this new nonprofit that we had launched. And, uh, pretty quickly after we became a 501 C three, um, we got a call from our local children's hospital who said they wanted to offer it to the kids. And so we thought, all right, let's just jump in, you know, and I, I hung up my bags and we've been doing this ever since. Sure. So for people that haven't heard of the melodic caring project, what exactly is it and how did you guys kind of decide to start it up? Yeah, absolutely. So the Melodic Caring Project is a 501c3 based here in Seattle, Washington. Um, what we do is we film live concerts and we stream them live to kids in hospital rooms all around the country and around the world. That's and great, man. We take the names of the kids that are watching the show because we keep it uh, at a minimum. We want it to be a very high impact experience for the kids, and that means it needs to be really personal. Uh, to make it really personal, we cap it at no more than nine kids per show. Okay. Then we give the names of those nine kids that are watching the show to the artist that's performing. So while they play their normal show, you know, so it could be uh, we just worked with Regina Spector at the Paramount Theater. So there's five thousand cool. people at the theater. Regina Spector is playing her normal show as she comes through Seattle, but she tailored her entire show around these kids that were watching and gave them all a shout out by name at the top of the show. 5,000 people cheer for these kids that are watching from their hospital rooms. And then throughout the show, she's dedicating songs to the kids and just sending them messages of love and support. And uh, for kids that are dealing with uh, terminal or you know life-threatening or long-term illness, they they start to feel like they've slipped through the cracks of society, right? As they spend sure. so much time in a hospital or in uh, even in quarantine, you know, that they just feel like they've they're being forgotten. And to have a a, a huge you know a list artist call them out by name and have five thousand people cheer for them as they're sitting in their hospital room is an incredible encouragement. So that's that's what we, that's the Melodic Caring Project. Sure. No, I, I, I love it. And kind of um, when I kind of found out about what you guys were doing, I was like, I have to have this guy in the show. So I, I think it's great. But to step back a second, what made you guys kind of decide to actually found this thing? And what was the kind of inspiration behind it? Yeah, the, the impetus for the project came uh, unexpectedly, very unexpectedly. I'm a musician as well, and I've played and toured sure. for 20 years. Um and a friend of mine is a middle school teacher, and he teaches at a small school called Bayview Elementary in, in Burlington, Washington, actually. Okay. And, uh, and what happened was one of his students, an 11-year-old girl named Katie, was diagnosed with leukemia. Oh. And for a small, uh, a small school and a small class in a small town, it was a really shocking diagnosis and really kind of hit everybody in the community hard, you know. And so sure. he called me and said – Levi, I, I don't know what to do with this. You know, do you have any ideas? And, uh, and being a musician, my first thought is always, well, yeah, let's do a concert. You know, let's let her know sure. that we're here and we care and she doesn't have to go through this on her own, you know? Sure. And so we gathered, um, the class and the, you know, the student body from Bayview Elementary, the staff and, uh, and a bunch of community members here in, uh, Mount Vernon is where we live, which is a neighboring community to Burlington. And, uh, and then, you know, we reached out to the local mayors and we just tried to make a, a real thing of it, you know, so that she knew that she was supported through this experience. That's and, great, man. Yeah, it was great. We had a great turnout. There was 300 people at the wow. Lincoln Theater the night of the show. Um, and as we were setting up for the show, we got the call that Katie had to go into Seattle Children's for chemo and couldn't be at the show that we were hosting for her, you know? Oh, that's sad. And it was... It was a gut shot, you know. We thought, "Oh man, everybody is here 
to support her and she can't even be because of what she's dealing with this, sure. this life threatening illness. She can't even be at the show that's held in her honor, you know? Sure. Um, and so I kind of, I, you know, I quickly thought, well, there's gotta be a way to get her involved. And I had a Mac laptop with a camera on it. The same one that I'm sitting here having this interview on Sure. and thought, let's stream the show to her. Okay. You know, she can't be here, but we can stream the show to her so she doesn't have to miss it. You know? And at the time thought, well, it's not going to be the same experience. You know, the emotion won't be there, but at least she'll be able to kind of participate, you know? Yep. So quickly set up a, a stream. Uh, I, I had a, a streaming page just for my music anyway, sent her the link and said, hey, Katie, we know you can't be here, but, you know, through this link, you can join us all at the Lincoln Theater. And so uh, that night we played the show. I literally took my laptop and just set it on the edge of stage. Okay. And played the show and would crouch down in front of the computer and the camera and, and point at the camera and say, Katie, we're all here. You are not alone. You know, we're thinking about you. All of your friends are here. Your classmates are here. And I'd pick up the whole computer and turn it from stage. Everybody away from the crowd. And, uh, and afterwards I called Katie and her mom, Patty at the hospital, uh, just to see, you know, see if they were able to watch and they were both sobbing. And, um, it took me off guard. I didn't, I honestly didn't expect that it was going to be an emotional experience for them, you know? And they just said, that was so amazing. You know, we're, we're here, we're alone in the hospital room. Katie's scared, you know, she's nauseous, she's having chemo and this really made a difference to us, you know? And so sure. we walked away from that show and that experience thinking, holy smokes, th this could be a really incredible outreach to kids that are going through really difficult times, you know, and, sure. and, um, and, you know, simultaneously thinking, yeah, but this is a fluke, right? I mean, this had to be, it was only emotional because Katie and Patty knew everybody. They had relationships with everybody in the crowd. And so we thought, okay, we need to try this again, but with somebody completely unconnected, you know, that we, we have no history with, there's no crowd affiliation. There's, you know, it's, uh, it's, anonymous, you know? And so uh, through Katie, we found another little guy named Brayden and a few other kids, actually a little girl named Maga. And, uh, and then Katie was on that show as well. And we had another show and we hosted that show from a venue in Seattle called the Q cafe. Okay, sure. And had a couple of artists out. And so we just repeated it. Right. Um, and afterwards talked to Brayden's family who we have, you know, we had no history with, we didn't know them at all. And, Brayden's mom, Renee, told us this story of Brayden's experience that was even more impacting than Katie's experience. And and their experience was that uh, Brayden was dealing with ALL leukemia and was having a really rough week, very heavy doses of chemo, um, a lot of nausea, and just nothing to look forward to. You know, I mean, it's one of those things where they're quarantined, they're stuck in four sure. walls, feeling sick and that's what they have to look forward to you know and so this offer to watch a concert was really exciting to them and they were looking forward to it all week and as their concert came on friday night brayden had had a, a, a really heavy dose of chemo that morning and was vomiting all day renee said he was just puke and rally puke and rally and just couldn't stop all day long you know and the concert was coming up. It was eight o'clock at night and Renee was kind of, kind of panicking, thinking, man, we're going to miss this show, you know? And, um, and, and worried about it because it was the only thing that Braden really had to get excited about that we can kind of take his mind off of what he was going through in the hospital. And so, um, eight o'clock hit when the show was starting, he leaned over and threw up and she in a panic opened up the computer and found the link and clicked on it and the show came up and it happened to be right as the artist was saying, Brayden, we're all here. Everybody is gathered here at the Q cafe. We're thinking about you. You are not alone, you know, and, and everybody's just excited to support you. And everybody was cheering. And Renee said that Brayden, you know, he threw up and he wiped his mouth and he sat up and looked at the computer and he said, what mom, they just called me by name. And, uh, and, Renee said, yeah, yeah, buddy, this is for you, you know? That's amazing. And, and she said that at that moment, uh, it was like something something 
switched, you know, and it engaged him. And rather than focusing on the nausea and on the illness and on the leukemia, um, he was looking at the show and focused on the concert and on the music. And, and that was it. He didn't throw up for the rest of the night. And she said, uh, halfway through the concert, she looked down at him and he just had big tears, you know, sure that gets me every time, big tears rolling down his cheeks, you know? And, uh, and he said, mom, they, they don't even know me. Why are they doing this for me? You know? And, that was when we realized, wow, this, it's not a fluke. You know, these kids desperately need some love and some support and they're going through these situations feeling alone and that's completely unnecessary. You know, in this day and age with our technology and what we have, we can meet them where they're at and let them know they're not alone and they're being supported and they're being thought of and, and cared for and loved, you know? And so that was the impetus for the Mulata Caring Project. And, uh, and it's been, just an incredible journey since since Katie and Brayden we have now reached almost 5000 kids all over the wow. all over the world you know that's around, amazing dude that's awesome so just to kind of so f- for people that kind of understand how do people you know with with a, maybe a sick child or something get like how does the whole thing kind of work if i'm a you know a sick kid and i or i have a parent of a sick kid how do i kind of get and work with you guys to get somebody to, you know, maybe put on a show or at least mention me in a concert. Sure. Yeah. So what we do right now, and we're, and we're working on this, this is an ongoing process and project, you know, and what sure. we, what we've realized, uh, during the course of, you know, the last six years of running with and developing the melodic caring project and really wanting it to be as impacting as, as possible. You know, there's, if you think about it because of the internet and what we do, there's no ceiling on the number of kids that we impact, you sure. know? Um, so what we've realized is we need a better way for the kids and families to, to know about it. As it works currently, we partner with hospitals and we have 182 hospitals signed up for the program around wow, the- that's awesome, the dude. Now. And the child life staff at the hospitals makes the kids and families aware of the program. So we have postcards uh, for the kids and families that have all the information, the- website where they can go to sign their kids up as the rock stars because with Melodic Caring Project, the kids are the rock stars and the artists are the number one fans. Sure. And that's cool. The focus goes to the kids, right? Sure. Um, and, and so that's how we do it currently. And, and, the, and the child life staff brings it to the kids and families. What we've realized is that in hospitals, um, almost, uh, almost on, uh, on a hospital by hospital basis, we've realized that the child life staff is overworked and they have a lot going on and they are, you know, they're bringing multiple programs to the kids and they're balancing the kids health and well-being in a number of other ways as well. So adding another task to their plate, though it's a great program, is still more work for them. Um, Got you. So what we've realized, and it's and it's working to a degree, but we're not impacting the number of kids we want to because a lot of times the child life staff is, they're just too busy. They forget. They don't think about it, you know. Um, and so we've realized this just needs to be a household name. This needs to be a make-a-wish, essentially, of, right. of programming for kids so that the kids just know that Melodic Caring Project is here to support them. All they have to do is reach out, you know. And so that's what we've been – that's kind of our – our new mission, you know, is to, to raise more earned media just because of the work that we're doing. We don't have the budget right now to pay for media, but, um, but it's a very compelling program and we have earned a lot of media because of what we're doing, the artists we're working with and the impact it's making. Sure. No, I, I think that's great, man. So how, okay. So I, there's a concert coming up. Um, people either, you know, get a, get a link from you guys or you guys have an app they can watch the, the concert on and whether I'm the child or I can just watch the event myself and not, and not have really anything involved in the actual thing. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 90% of our shows, I would say are public shows, right? So we'll partner with these artists as they come through, we'll stream it out through our public uh, platform and anybody can watch. And so, you know, we worked with Alabama shakes a little while ago. They tweeted it out to all of their fan base and we had 15,000 fans of Alabama shakes watching from around the world. That's great though. It's, it's amazing because what we're, what it does is it commutes, it, it creates a community of, um, 
of fans and of, of the artists themselves and of the kids to all come together and share love with the kids in the hospital, right? So during this show, while the Shakes had 15,000 people watching from around the world, we had, I think, I think on that show, we made an exception. We had 12 kids on watching from around, around the country. Sure. And yeah. while Brittany was calling the kids out by name, there's a live chat along with the viewer as well. So there was fans of the Shakes messaging in from literally everywhere. I mean, we had people in Africa. We had people wow. in That's great. Eastern Europe. We had people, you know, in, in, uh, Holland. We had people in, uh, in, uh, where else, man? Uh, in South America, all over the world, people were messaging in and sending messages to these kids in the hospital. Say, hey, I'm watching, you know, from uh, from Latvia. We're thinking about you. That's You're not cool. A, you know? So it was a, it's a very cool thing that's created around just this fun event, right? And and that's the beauty of it is it's, it's not about focusing on the, the kid's illness. It's about focusing on the fact that these are kids and sure. they want to have fun. And this is just a fun experience for them. Sure. So – You've kind of mentioned um, some artists kind of throughout kind of our talk, but do you maybe kind of want to just, I guess, name drop for lack of a better term of some other artists that have been involved in the past or that are coming up? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, I, I, these artists have been so wonderful. I love I love sharing their name and letting people know how cool they've been. You know sure. what I mean? Because they're they're taking a moment to use their skill set and their hard earned position to do good, yeah. you know? And so artists we've worked with, we've, I think you mentioned the black eyed peas. We worked with them. Um, we worked with Daughtry recently. We worked with Amos Lee a couple of times doing the, uh, doing the VR show. And then we just did another standard production with him. We just worked with Regina Spector. We worked with the head and the heart a couple of times. Um, sure. we have worked with, uh, Gosh, we just worked with Andrea Day a little while ago. We worked with Switchfoot. We've worked with uh, uh, Neon Trees. We've worked with uh, Ben Rector, Need to Breathe. Um, so ton tons of A-list kind of a, a ton, celebrities ton of and musicians. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's great. To come along, the, along on this journey with us. No, that's great. And you guys just have kind of a big partnership with a couple big brands to do some VR stuff. Do you maybe want to kind of talk more about what exactly that partnership is and, and what you guys are doing with the VR stuff? Yeah, absolutely. In in an effort, you know, as I was saying, to, to be as impactful on the kids as possible, we realized that the, the whole virtual reality experience would be incredibly impacting on these kids. Because, you know, as, if you think about it, them being able to open a screen and watch a show where they're getting shout outs is great. I mean, it's, it really distracts them from the situation they're in, in the hospital, but they're still peripherally surrounded by the experience of being in the hospital. There's still the beeping machines, right? They're still seeing the, the IV poles and the nurses are still coming in. And so it doesn't remove them from that situation. And we realized that, uh, what would be a, an incredible experience for these kids is a totally immersive experience through VR where we could literally take them out of that room, remove them from the hospital, right? Sure. Bring them to the venue. And so we, uh, we talked it through with uh, Ericsson and through the AT&T Foundry, uh, we partnered with Ericsson AT&T, a, uh, a company out of Austin called uh, Quantum Interface, and then a VR company out of Austin called Subversive. And we all came together in Austin at Austin City Limits, uh, the Moody Theater, and we worked with Amos Lee to stream his show out live to kids in hospitals around the country. And it was a, just a phenomenal experience. And the feedback from the families was really powerful. You know, I mean, kind of exactly the experience that we were hoping that they would have where they really felt removed from their situation, even if just for an hour, you know, sure. they were taken out of that. Uh, out of that reality of illness and uh, and treatment, and they were transported to the Moody Theater with a couple thousand people that were cheering for them. And Amos Lee would point right at the camera and call them out by name. And uh, and the kids, you know, through the VR, they could turn, they could look at the crowd, they could turn and look at Amos. They had control over their own experience. Sure. So that's great. Very very cool. And uh, and it was good. It was very well received by uh, AT and T and Ericsson. Quantum Interface is now doing a layer of navigation on top of it, which oh, is going to be cool. the first in the world where they will have the kids will have hands free capability to navigate the whole experience in post production. 
Um, okay, interesting. So, yeah, so it's an ongoing project, and our partnership with AT and T and Ericsson is ongoing as well as we uh, create more content and uh, and you know send more love and support to the kids. Sure. So you also have a big kind of annual event coming up in in June. What exactly is it, and um, where exactly is it? Yes. Uh, so every year we partner with a nonprofit in Kansas City, and it's called Big Slick. It's a fantastic organization. Um, really, it's just a bunch of friends is what it is, but they happen to be um, a well-known bunch of friends. So sure. we do this event. They, they, they came together to create a fundraiser for their local children's hospital. So Kansas City uh, Children's Mercy is the recipient of all the money raised through Big Slick. Big Slick is a is a partnership of Rob Riggle, Jason Sudeikis, Paul Rudd, uh, Eric Stone Street, and Dave Keckner. So all real well known actors who sure. you know done a lot of incredible work here in the last few years. And so for the last three years, we partner with these guys, and they do a celebrity softball game. Okay. Uh, and then they do a celebrity bowling tournament, and we stream all of these events to the kids in the hospitals. That's and great. What's cool about it is when we when we first started, we thought, yeah, I mean, what a what a great opportunity to send because this was right when Ant Man was coming out, you know, and okay, so yeah. that Paul Rudd and the kids were going to be really excited about it, right? Um, and but we kind of thought, what are the kids going to do with them? celebrity softball game you know i mean in all honesty is that going to be fun for them is bowling is that really going to be fun for the kids you know but so what we did to, to mix it up so it wasn't just them watching uh a softball game was we have cameras set at home plate okay interesting and the celebrities come up before they go up to bat and you know and they're and they're just all these guys are just goofballs they're just <laughs> a fun bunch of, they're all comedians you know so sure. they're just they're just dorks. They're hamming it up. They're giving shout outs to the kids and they're like, oh, I'm going to wall up one way out past the fence for you, Mackenzie. You know, and, and then they'll walk up and strike out. Right. <laughs> but, you know, they'll come back to the That's camera, great. do some comedy bit, you know. So um, but, you know, I mean, Selena Gomez was there. Johnny Knoxville. Um, it's it's like 40 huge actors that come together and they do this uh, this event every year. And so. We're going back out there in June to work with them again, and we're excited to stream them out to the kids and, you know, just kind of continue it on. And this year, we're actually looking to grow it and do side stages so that uh, they're not just coming up and, you know, like before bowling a strike saying, oh, I'm going to roll this ball for you. You know, they're, they're coming to side stages. They're doing bits and comedy routines, and it'll be a fun experience for the kids. That's great. So I'm curious then to go maybe a little bit kind of on the technical side. How much of what you guys are doing with uh, melodic caring that you guys kind of have to build your own technology or are you guys kind of leveraging stuff that's out there or a bit of both? How are you guys doing that? Yeah, it's um, we build our own production. The technology for the most part was in place. So we use a TriCaster is what we use now. And I mean, it started as a single, uh, you know, a single laptop. Um, okay with literally the built-in, you know, speakers and microphones on the laptop to now it's a full blown, um, high end production for the kids. We want them to, to never have a moment's downtime. Right. right and right. With single camera, it's inevitable. You're going to have downtime. But with, with our system now we've developed it so that for the kids, it's like watching, uh, you know, a, uh, like MTV or something like that, where it's, right. it's very well produced. There's, uh, previous shows, we have roll in videos, there's slates, we can put sponsor logos up, all that sort of thing. Um, it's now our average switch is like a four to six camera switch. Wow. So a big production a, we, then. Yeah, it's a big production. That's absolutely. Awesome. So, so with Regina, right, the kids were getting a view from on stage. They were getting, you know, a wide angle. They were getting tight shots of Regina's hands on keys. It's it's well produced. So for the kids they get to really kind of experience the concert, right? Um, and so, like I said, we use a TriCaster for that. Um, we are currently, we partnered with Ustream to use them as a platform for nice. the Melodic Caring Project. So we stream all of our shows out through Ustream to the kids. Um, and that's, you know, that's the, that's the basic setup for what we do. No, that's, that's awesome. So how can people get involved, you know, obviously financially and kind of 
anything else that you guys are looking for that people can get involved, maybe volunteer or other kind of ways that people can get involved? Sure, absolutely. Um, we, through the website, melodiccaring.org, um, they can go and we have sign up links there. So the kids can go there, families can go there. If there's any uh, families who you know have kids or know of kids that uh, could use some support and some love, they can go to melodiccaring.org, go to the rock star submission form okay. and sign up their kids. And then from there, we will work directly with the families to line the kids up for uh, you know the next upcoming show. Sure. Um, same with, uh, you know, donors, if what, what melodic is doing is something that you know, think is good work and needs to continue, obviously, uh, support is crucial in that. So, uh, we have donation pages on the melodic caring project as well. Um, same there's artist submission forms as well. So if, uh, you know, if there's artists or management or, agents or, uh, you know, promoters that are listening, then they can go to the website as well. And we'd love to work with your artists as they, uh, you know, as they come through Seattle or we've gone all over the country to do shows as well. So there's a lot of opportunities. Sure. No, that's great. And is there anything, are you guys like, obviously you guys are based in Seattle and you guys have done stuff outside of kind of Seattle. Um, are you guys looking to kind of move to other cities more or or is it like how does that what do you guys think you want to do kind of long term with this thing yes absolutely i mean one one issue that we have being based in seattle is that we are a pacific time region gotcha. uh so as we reach out to kids in new york it's pretty late right sure. as regina specter goes on at eight o'clock well it's 11 o'clock in new york you know sure. so um we are our plans right now are to Seattle will be our, our launch station, but we're going to stamp a melodic caring project office in Nashville and then another in New York or DC. And we're actually working with somebody right now in DC to build out another, uh, satellite office, uh, and start streaming shows kind of in reverse, right? So from sure. DC, we can support kids in, uh, on the West coast easy and all the way through to the East coast. We also simultaneously right now we're working with Chesterfield College in the United Kingdom, and oh, very we're cool. launching Melodic Caring Project in the United Kingdom in June. So we will be uh, streaming shows from Chesterfield, UK, to kids all over Europe. But then, as well, that reaches back to the East Coast. You know, sure. so from there, we can easily support kids on the East Coast, and then from the West Coast, we can jump over the East Coast in Europe and support kids in. Uh, in the Asias and in uh, Australia, New Zealand, that sort of thing. So we'll kind of have the globe covered at that point. Sure. No, that's that's great, man. And I, I guess it, it maybe sounds kind of odd, but you probably want to basically have satellite offices or offices in cities where they get a lot of, you know. Music new, cities. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right? For absolutely. Yeah, and obviously like Seattle, New York, Nashville. Uh, you L.A. Know, yeah, L.A. are all kind of big big cities for that. And, and that's, yes. that's great, man. Um, but we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So I think maybe just for people that maybe tuned in a little bit later, do you want to maybe give a kind of a quick overview again of what the Melodic Caring Project is, how people can get involved and where they can get more information about you guys online? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so Melodic Caring Project is a Seattle-based nonprofit. We're a 501c3. We were founded in 2010. Uh, and what we do is we film live concerts and send live production to kids in hospitals around the country and around the world. Um, we give the names of the kids that are watching to the artists that are performing. So as they're playing their show, they call the kids out by name, dedicate songs to them, and then the whole crowd at the venue cheers for the kids and just lets them know that they're being supported, they're being lifted up and cared for. Um, we, we do shows here in Seattle, but we do shows around the country and would love to partner with artists and management to, to do more shows and send more shows to kids. Um, you can go to melodic caring.org to learn more or to get involved and we would love to have your participation we're uh, we're growing so it's you know it's great the the input and uh, the relationships and partnerships are a huge part of what has allowed us to impact as many kids as we have levi again i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show and i look forward to keeping in touch with you and you no know, congrats again on everything you're doing and you guys are growing like crazy and 
I look forward to kind of following your guys' story throughout the rest of the year and kind of beyond. Awesome. Kevin, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com. And keep them in the future.